Okay, thank you. Um, next, uh, Amy Prohl from uh, Georgetown University is going to uh, discuss why vitamin G induced dysregulation of nuclear receptors may account for higher prevalence of some autoimmune diseases in women. Thank you, Amy. First of all, I'd also like to thank the conference organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I'm going to examine why the prevalence or why autoimmune diseases such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis are much more likely to occur in women than in men, especially during the childbearing years. For example, in the study discussed by Professor Marshall, in which both sexes are allowed to participate equally, out of 104 subjects surveyed, 24 have Hashimoto's, wrong side, 24 have Hashimoto's, but only three of them are men. What might be going on? One obvious difference between the sexes is that they express hormones at different levels. Furthermore, as Professor Marshall and other researchers have shown, the vitamin D nuclear receptor controls important components of the innate immune response particularly transcription of the beta defensin and catalytic antimicrobial peptides. Um, the Gano's recent work, the right slide, has confirmed that the active vitamin D metabolite, 125-hydroxy vitamin D, is produced in the human cycling endometrium. He also showed, using Western blood analysis and immunohistochemistry, that both cycling and early pregnant endometrial cells express the vitamin D receptor, which is activated by 125D. Finally, he showed a 40% increase in 125D production in the early pregnant decidua. The endometrium may have evolved to express the VDR and produce 125D in an effort to stimulate the infant innate immune system during gestation, or perhaps to offset the drop in cell mediated immunity that occurs during the weeks before menstruation. But increasing evidence indicates that at some point in the history of man, a microbiota composed largely of intraphagocytic and biofilm bacteria evolved a way to take advantage of the innate immune response by creating ligands that dysregulate vitamin D receptor activity. For example, Professor Marshall has shown that the sulfonylipid capnine, which is created by gliding biofilm bacteria, is a strong VDR antagonist. I should also add that we refer to this microbiota as the Th1 pathogen, since their presence is associated with elevated interferon gamma. Since the Th1 pathogens are able to dysregulate the VDR, they have perverted what was intended to be a protective environment during pregnancy and menstruation into one that allows them to flourish. When the ligands they create disable the VDR, expression of beta defensin and catholicidin is curtailed rather than activated. And unfortunately, vitamin D receptor dysregulation also has other effects that allow the Th1 pathogens to further proliferate. You can see from this figure that when active, the vitamin D receptor transcribes CYP24A1, an enzyme that breaks 125D down into the inactive vitamin D metabolites. But what happens if the VDR is dysregulated by the Th1 pathogens? Under such conditions, CYP24A1 is no longer transcribed and 125D is able to rise without a feedback system to keep it in check. Marshall's in silico modeling has shown that 125D also has a strong affinity for the body's other nuclear receptors, suggesting that at high levels it can interfere with their activity. Since I'm discussing thyroiditis, let's take a look at the effects of elevated 125D on thyroid alpha. Here is the emulation of the alpha thyroid nuclear receptor, THRA. Marshall has shown that 125D has a very high affinity for THRA, a KD of 8.41. Normally, levels of T3, which have a KD of 7.2 for THRA, should keep 125D out of the binding pocket. 
But as 125D rises due to VDR dysregulation, it starts to proportionally displace T3 and block transcription by thyroid alpha. The same thing happens with thyroid beta, since 125D has a KD of 8.44 for that receptor. So, when 125D displaces T3, the genes with alpha thyroid promoters can no longer be transcribed. T3 is displaced, therefore, the thyroid can't function properly, resulting in the phenomenon recently described as thyroid hormone resistance. This may explain why increasing levels of thyroid hormone are necessary in order to keep 125D out of THRA as the disease progresses, a measure that is palliative but not curative. And since all the type 1 nuclear receptors work as a group, when transcription by THRA is dysregulated, system-wide gene transcription is also affected. And as I mentioned before, this same pattern is repeated when it comes to several of the body's other nuclear receptors. For example, Marshall has shown that 125D has a KD of 8.05 for the androgen receptor and a KD of 8.12 for the glucocorticoid receptor. So elevated 125D can displace cortisol and testosterone from their target receptors as well, resulting in an array of other hormonal imbalances. An additional effect is also of importance. By disabling the nuclear receptors, 125D also has detrimental effects on system-wide antimicrobial peptide production. Just as the VDR expresses beta defensin and catholicidin, other, a other nuclear receptors also express AMPs. Take a look at this table, which presents data taken from a recent analysis of AMP expression by Brahmacherry. You can see that the glucocorticoid, Androgen and vitamin D receptors seem to be in control of 20, 17, and 16 families of antimicrobial peptides out of 22 analyzed. So, disabling the VDR with flow on effects to the glucocorticoid, thyroid, androgen, and other nuclear receptors delivers a knockout blow to the body's antimicrobial peptide production. Disabling the VDR and subsequently the AMPs is a very logical thing for pathogens to have done. So much so that if such a survival mechanism were possible, it seems quite likely it would have evolved. It comes as little surprise then that hormonal dysregulation is con intricately connected to autoimmune disease. For example, you can see here that most of the patients with Hashimoto's analyzed by our study have also been diagnosed with other inflammatory or autoimmune diseases. In fact, only 8% of subjects with Hashimoto's have Hashimoto's alone. We now have a pathway in the molecular biology showing how these apparently diverse physiological conditions can interact. Essentially, VDR dysregulation and the drop in AMP expression that it instigates allow the Th1 pathogens that Marshall describes in autoimmune disease to spread with greater ease. Since patients are immunocompromised, they pick up new Th1 pathogens, including concomitant viral co-infections. And what's more, since women have an extra site of VDR gene transcription, the endometrium, they express more vitamin D receptors in men. So, the overexpression of the VDR in women may mean that as they age, they are disproportionately affected by the drop in AMP expression associated with VDR dysregulation. So, they end up with heavier bacterial loads and exhibit greater morbidity than their male counterparts. This model may also explain why many women with autoimmune disease find that their symptoms escalate after pregnancy. Since 125D rises by 40% in the early pregnant decidua, its ability to dysregulate the nuclear receptors and the AMPs they express is particularly prevalent during this time. So at least during the early stages of gestation, the Th1 pathogens are able to spread with exceptional ease. Finally, I should also add that Marshall has shown that 25-hydroxyvitamin D, which is derived from supplemental vitamin D, is able to displace exogenous ligands from the nuclear receptors just as effectively as 125D, marking a way in which it is able to suppress the innate immune response. So it may indeed be possible that VDR dysregulation plays a significant role in the higher incidence of autoimmune disease observed among women, and that vitamin D supplementation could further account for this skew in incidence. Further research is needed. 
Finally, I would also like to add one more thing. When it comes to correlating disease incidence with low levels of vitamin D, it's also incredibly important to consider the alternate hypothesis, which is that the low levels of vitamin D may not be causing the disease, but may simply be a result of the disease process. So a low level of vitamin D correlated with an illness may simply be an indicator that the disease process has taken effect in that patient. Thank you, and I appreciate your time.